you know, if you're thinking about technological developments that uh, affect surveillance, you might think of those spectacular ones like Google Glass or uh, surveillance drones. But I would say that the most significant development is probably social media. And that might not sound uh, what you're expecting, but um, the reason that I would choose social media is because what we see in social media as surveillance and surveillance in social media is the ways in which surveillance has penetrated everyday life. That where we live online is now very much the place where surveillance happens. And so while it may not be the most obvious site, I think that, that is where we find surveillance today. And the Snowden revelations, of course, indicate precisely that the NSA, National Security Agency, and other agencies are obtaining their data from those internet companies, from social media platforms, and so on. So actually, I think social media is a key site of surveillance today. One of the ways in which surveillance is intensifying in the 21st century is through the use of what is called big data. And that is a, a range of practices and processes, techniques that uh, center around the use of advanced statistical techniques and uh, also uh, computing power software analysis. And so that, that combination using algorithms in order to try to solve certain kinds of searching problems is cent the center of what we call big data. Now, applying big data analysis to surveillance has been happening for many years, but it's very much intensifying now. And it leads to all kinds of major ethical issues. For one thing, there is the dubious assumption that somehow we can find accurate answers from these very large scale, collect it all kinds of data sets. And another is that uh, time honored ideas such as the presumption of innocence are really questioned in a situation when what we call preemptive prediction is what is really going on. You're, tr you're trying to predict what's going to happen uh, with a view to attempting to stop it before it happens, like Minority Report style. The Snowden revelations have been uh, going on since June 2013, and uh, what they show, it, above all, is that the internet companies, social media platforms, uh, can be accessed by national security agencies, not only in the States but elsewhere, uh, in order to obtain data and metadata, things about the duration of calls or the location of uh, a cell phone or a computer. Um, to try to discover uh, who might be a suspect, who might be uh, a likely consumer for a particular product, who might be a person at risk. These ways in which, uh, on the one hand, big data, and on the other hand, uh, social media are being used are very clear in the Snowden revelations. And they have been quite shocking for people in some countries or some uh, s sectors of uh, individual countries. And some, some of the aftermath has to do with what you might call business as usual. Despite the size of the revelations, life seems to go on. On the other hand, some have seen it as uh, signaling a need for some serious questioning. And to his credit, President Obama did uh, commission a uh, report, it's called the, the NSA report, by a, a panel of experts. And what they did, interestingly, was to point very clearly to the privacy, civil liberties, and human rights aspects of what was being exposed through the Snowden revelations. Now, we don't know what the future holds, but it certainly seems to me that uh, whatever happens, it is those who pay attention to precisely those questions about privacy, civil liberties, and human rights who will be at least addressing the right kinds of questions because the questions won't go away. We live online, the internet is tremendously important, and that increasingly is going to be the site of struggles over power in a number of areas.